Brock Venom. Now, hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on the Toys R Us exclusive Marvel Legends Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson. If you're trying to pick these up, you can get them at Toys R Us. They're hitting Toys R Us stores right now. What do you think I was going to say, huh? Yeah, it says Toys R Us right over there. I gotta give a big thanks to Mr. Phils for making sure this review is happening right now. I'm very stoked to have this two-pack set. They look very, very good. This is the all-new Spider-Man, or the Spidey Stark, as I like to call him, right? That's our Spidey Stark right there. And a beautiful looking Mary Jane Watson already. Anyway, on the side, we get a very charismatic looking Spider-Man. And then on the back over here, you can see some product shots right there. There's a read-up over here. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it now. Then on this side, we have a very nice looking Mary Jane Watson. And then on the top, there's nothing going on right over there and not much more at the bottom. All right, let's get to it and crack these things open. And here's the Mary Jane Watson and all new Spider-Man figure out of the packaging. And man, I'm very happy to have this set. Uh, for the first time, we are getting a six inch scale Peter Parker head sculpt with this Spidey figure. Uh, did you forget about the Ultimate Spider-Man tournament? I, I meant from the 616. Well, then you should have been more specific. And then also, for the first time, we are getting a comic version of Mary Jane Watson for our Marvel Legends, which I am just absolutely thrilled about. I'm so stoked to finally have that. I do have a movie version of Mary Jane, and then there's this horrid Spider-Man 3 Mary Jane that, oh, yeah, let's not even talk about that. But these two figures right here are absolutely amazing. I am thrilled with them. Now, I don't want you guys thinking I don't like them when I mention my little nitpicks, okay? They're just little tiny nitpicks, but I do love these figures. Anyway, let's first take a closer look at this all-new Spider-Man, and then we'll take a closer look at Mary Jane. So briefly talking about this all-new Spider-Man and why he looks the way he does, and why I refer to him as Spider-Stark. Uh, after the whole superior Spider-Man storyline, Peter Parker goes back into his body, but since Otto Octavius was running the show, he had started Parker Industries, uh, which was developing a lot of technology and doing a whole lot of research and development and all that, but now Peter Parker runs that company and he uses the technology developed by Otto Octavius and himself and he puts that stuff into uh, the Spider-Man suit that you're seeing right here. So he has different kinds of webbing and stuff like that which is kind of neat and it's like voice activated which I thought was kind of cool. And another good thing about having this figure is that this is the modern look for Spider-Man right now. So we have a lot of other figures like Silk and the new Spider-Man 2099 and a lot of other Spider-Verse figures that you can use with this all new Spider-Man. Now, a kind of funny thing about this is that this figure does come with the Mary Jane Watson, but currently Mary Jane and Peter Parker are not an item. So, posing these two uh, figures together, getting all lovey-dovey would be incorrect. And I love what they've done here by choosing the superior Spider-Man head sculpt for this figure. I thought that was a very smart move as you'd seen in those photos. It does have this design. It does have that look to it. Plus, I mean, without superior Spider-Man, we wouldn't have this all-new Spider-Man. So, I thought that was a very smart move. Uh, you can see the paint looks really good in the eyes right there, you know, except for a couple little dots that are missing. You can see a little bit, you know, extra white dots right there, but it doesn't look too bad. I like that glowing effect. I think it actually works really well, so I am impressed by that. Not too bad on Hasbro's part at all. I like how the cobweb design looks for the all-new Spider-Man also. It's very rigid, very linear. Uh, it doesn't have the curves in the webbing pattern, so I thought that's kind of like a neat added touch. And then looking at the the spider logo right here. I actually have a t-shirt with this spider logo. Just geeking out a little bit, you know what I mean? Like having it, but yeah, it glows right over there. Uh, I didn't check to see if this glows in the dark, but from what I have heard, it does not glow in the dark. I wish the paint came out just a little bit cleaner on this though. You can see it's kind of a little speckly right there, so eh, it's not too bad though. Eh, for the most part, it looks pretty good. And then the line work looks fairly solid throughout on this guy, so I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, looking up here though, I did notice like very early on that I was getting a lot of paint scuffage right there, so that does bother me some. And looking at the inside of these butterfly joints right here, it doesn't look too shabby. And I do like this bright blue. 
I think it looks really nice and a little sloppy black paint right there. Now my biggest complaint with this figure is the pegs. Now this red peg doesn't really bother me so much but this one does and I don't know how they've managed to do this making this whole hinge piece right. I think it's like the pins go through this piece of plastic right here and it's kind of a tricky situation because you want red on this side and you want blue on this side and the only way to get around that is like in the toy biz days when they would actually have a person paint each of these. And I was thinking to myself, you know, ah, oh, damn it, Hasbro, why are you guys gotta be cheap? Because I also notice it on the legs right here. So, think about Hasbro being cheap, why can't you hire somebody to paint all of these? And then I was thinking to myself, wait, how much would I like to get paid to, you know, paint these every single day? I mean, it has to be sustainable living wage to do that, painting little dots all day, and then think about how many figures they're making. I mean, it would actually kind of cost a bit of money, right? I don't know. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm down to hear your thoughts on it. I did notice Notice that the paint did get a little bit weird right over here, a little bit scuffage, you know what I mean? Things like that, just getting it right out of the package, so that kind of bothers me some. But going back to the legs right over here, I do think the deco looks fairly solid. I do like it. And then, yeah, those pins just really do bother me. That's my biggest gripe with this figure is those pins right there. And I just want to get a good look at the back of the figure over here, which I think looks really good once again. You know, very nice line work and everything. I do think the Spidey logo looks good in the back. Uh, it's not 100% centered. I don't know. It looks pretty good. It just looks like it's a little off center. But yeah, I'm glad that you can still port stands into that and everything. Very cool. Now, before I show off the Peter Parker head sculpt, I did want to compare this to the Superior Spider-Man head sculpt really quick so you can see they're the same exact thing right there. I was looking at the Peter Parker head sculpt and I like it a lot. I am very pleased and I'm very excited to finally have a fully unmasked 616 Peter Parker head sculpt. This is what I wanted to see for a Peter Parker head sculpt in 616 form and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm very very pleased with this. This is awesome. I think it's great and it kind of looks like the same dude from the half unmasked pizza spidey head sculpt as you can see right here, right? The facial features look very similar. The skin tone on this one is a lot darker though, so that's the only major difference, I guess. But yeah, it, it, for the most part, it looks like it's the same dude, so yeah, I'm very pleased with that. Now, I am seeing some QC issues over here that eh, kind of bother me a little bit. Like, he does look cockeyed, right? Uh, he looks a bit cockeyed, like the pupil right here is going that way, that pupil's going that way. Then he has this weird line on the forehead right here coming from his eyebrow going up there. Then he has this weird little white stain in his hair. How did that get there? What are you doing on the weekends, Peter? Huh? What you doing, man? But hey, it's your business, not mine. So anyway, looking on the side, the hair looks really good. There's no shadowing effect or anything like that in this brown hair. It does look nice with just the solid brown, though. And I think it was sculpted very nicely. So I'm very happy with that. I think that's very cool. And I have put this on many other figures. So you can see it right here on the chameleon body. Uh, when you put this head sculpt on the chameleon body, though, you want to make sure not to push it down all the way. Or else it looks like he's got, you know... Like, a, he's necklace, so, uh, yeah, he's, you gotta put him, like, just rest the head barely on there, and it'll still, you know, stay on there, you can still shake it around and stuff and pose it as you'd like, but yeah, that looks really good. I also put this head sculpt on many other figures, as you can see right here, and if you want to go ahead and put this head sculpt on the Ben Riley Spidey figures, you can go ahead and do so, you just have to repaint the hair, and then you'll be set, and then you'll have some maskless Ben Riley action going on too. And one thing definitely worth mentioning with this new Parker head sculpt is that I do not think that this is just a downsized retool from the 12 inch Spider-Man that we'd gotten not too long ago. This is a brand new head sculpt so I'm pleased to see that they didn't just reuse this one even though the smirk is very similar so they may have taken parts from this they do look similar as far as the facial expression goes but they are different head sculpts now not only did we get the extra head sculpt but we also get all of these hands that come with the pizza spidey which I think is great and you can see the cobweb pattern right here is slightly different from what we see with the regular spider-man so I think that's awesome we get the two whipping hands we get the two wall crawling hands and then we also get the two fisted hands and just to give a quick shout out to Bug Nice 10, I did try putting on these different Iron Fist hands, and it did turn out, like Bug said, the Doctor Strange hands do work best with this figure. So if you wanted to put this on, 
uh, you're all new Spidey and you want to do something like that. But I honestly don't have a serious interest in leaving my figure on display with regular fleshy hands. Now I'm not going to get into the articulation with this figure. We've seen this figure reused so many times, but just demonstrating how far the head can look up with the Peter head sculpt, it does look very far up. So I think that's great. Uh, one thing I am noticing is that the legs are really wobbly on this guy. So yeah, you do get some wobbly legs right there. As far as moving the hips outward, because I remember I did kind of complain about how much the hips didn't move outward on Pizza Spidey. I do think these legs have a bit more range of movement moving outward on this guy than on this one right here. Ah, I really wish Glenn could enjoy this two-pack set. Now from the beginning, John Romita Sr. has given Mary Jane Watson a bunch of different outfits, but in her first appearance, she was wearing a black sleeveless shirt like this with the blue denim jeans, and I think it's brilliant that Hasbro went ahead for that choice for her attire with this first comic version of Mary Jane Watson. Also, there's some notable artists such as Adam Hughes, and J. Scott Campbell that have drawn up Mary Jane with the same clothing that we're seeing on this figure, minus the slipper shoes. You know, we could have had a barefoot Mary Jane, but hey, you know what I mean? Can't get too picky. But yeah, I think that that was a very smart choice. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, there was a point where Mary Jane did wear the rescue armor, and I went ahead and put this head right on that rescue armor figure, and it does fit. And I also saw an image of her in Captain Marvel garb, and this head sculpt fits on our Captain Marvel as well. You just can't smush the head all the way down just like how I put the Parker head on that suited body so yeah you don't want to smush the head all the way down but anyway taking a closer look at this beautiful head sculpt I think she looks absolutely gorgeous the paint came out so good on this I love how the eyes are centered right here she has these nice green eyes. I like that they added the freckles. I don't remember seeing Ramita Sr. drawing her with freckles, but I have seen it before at some point. I just can't remember where, and I don't know. I think it looks good. And her hair isn't, you know, perfectly straight like we'd seen in Ramita Sr., but, you know, I think this looks really good. I think this is a very modern look for Mary Jane, and I just absolutely love it. The lips came out looking really nice. I like the flesh tone. It's just gorgeous, man. This is the most beautiful Marvel Legend I think I've ever seen. And I love how the hair fades from this lighter color red to a much darker red right here. I think that's really good. I think that came out very, very nicely. I'm very pleased with this, man. Yeah, very good looking figure. And then looking at the top right here, which I think some of this was reused from the Kate Bishop Hawkeye figure, especially the arms. Now that's a complaint of mine for sure, is that her arms are a bit too beefy, you know? she She's not a superhero. Uh, and she kind of has a little bit extra muscle right there than I think she should have. It's just that her arms look really thick, especially when you put them on the sides like this. It just looks like she has these really thick arms. I do wish she had interchangeable hands, um, but I don't know. I think that's kind of getting a little picky, you know. See right here? You can see, like, just looking at her wrist, that's like a really thick thick wrist. So yeah, I feel like these arms are just a bit too thick. I don't know. I'm sure some customizer is going to sand these down thin them out a little bit. But looking at the shirt right here, nice wrinkles. You can even see her abs underneath. And there is a little bit of blue coming up from underneath that, which bothers me a little bit. But I do like how the denim came out on this. This looks awesome. Nice little gold button right over there. Looks really good. Turn around from the side. Uh, you know, a little short changed in the Naga. Supermodels aren't necessarily the thickest women out there, but yeah, it doesn't look bad. Yeah, you know, not my favorite, but you know. And then looking on the side right over here, this looks really good. You can see the deco for the highlights just kind of pasted on there because it has that little hatching pattern in it. But I think it came out nice. I like it. I think that looks really good. I like all these wrinkles in here. Uh, the fading doesn't really go into the joints, of course, you know. But yeah, that looks really good. I like how this comes down, very nice tight jeans and everything. Yeah, I just wish you can grab these and just, you know, you know that move? I know that move very well. And then, unless they're socks, you grab them right here, yeah, and then they go, there they go. But yeah, nice flesh tone. Did get a little bit of scuffage on, which one was it? Yeah, there's like a little line right over here on this ankle, but yeah, it's not too bad. And she does have peg holes underneath her feet. So yeah, good looking figure, man. And then here's the back of it. She does have a peg hole in the back right here. Uh, one thing that's very important to mention too is that this hair is soft. It has very nice soft pliable material to it. So I dig it a lot. Now, of course, you can go ahead and pop this off. 
and I did put a bunch of different heads on this body. And a lot of them actually work out fairly well, but my favorite are the Silk and the new Invisible Woman. But a lot of them work, and there's a lot of possibilities over here, so I just think that is awesome. The one that really bummed me out that wouldn't fit on here, though, is the Gwen Stacy. Yeah, I guess maybe if you put the hinge all the way back like that, it, nah, yeah, the Gwen Stacy head's just not gonna fit on there. See some scuffage right over here for me, popping heads on and off with this body right there, so expect a little bit of damage. I'm probably going to buy two of these sets. Now, MJ does come with this satchel or purse. It's actually supposed to be a purse because it's coming with MJ, but it really is the satchel that we'd gotten with the goblin figures in the past. A nice little detailed gold paint right there, so I do appreciate that. And I do like the color choice for it, a little bit more detailed gold paint right there as well. Um, but you know, she will hold this fairly well. Uh, what I like to do is just wrap it around her shoulder and then make sure that this open part uh, between her and her hand is kind of pushing against it a little bit and I feel like that suits the figure best. As you saw me pose her like this at the beginning of the video, so I don't know, I think that looks okay. I haven't really decided or made up my mind yet if I'm gonna have her on display like this or not. I probably will have her on display uh, in the arms of a swinging Spider-Man though. Now looking at MJ's articulation, you can move her head up very far for all this hair right here. That's without the torso moving back so much. I mean, look at that. She can look up quite a bit. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, she does have like a shifting forward and back, so that really helps getting her head looking upward. Thank you so much, Hasbro. I think that is fantastic. Uh, you can get the head to look all the way down, and she will rotate side to side, Whoop. and you do get a great amount of head pivot right here, too. Uh, her shoulders do move all the way up and down, and you can rotate them around. You get only a single jointed elbow. I wish we had double jointed elbows. That's a bit frustrating. It does rotate at the elbow as well. You get wrists that swivel side to side and they hinge up and down. You get the diaphragm joint that turns side to side. It can crunch forward a little bit and move back. You do get diaphragm pivot and she also has nice hip joints that move all the way outward that far. There you go MJ. And she can kick forward that much and not back at all. She does have an upper thigh cut right here and then she has the double jointed knees that bend in all the way which looks really good. And then she has ankles that move down, up, and she does have ankle pivot. Now seeing these figures side by side, I really like the height difference between these two. With MJ being a supermodel and everything, she shouldn't be short. She's just a tiny little bit shorter than Peter Parker. And measuring both of these figures out, you can see that Peter's standing just a little under the six and a half inch mark, whereas MJ is just a little over six inches. Now I just wanted to show this MJ next to a suited Spider-Man, and yeah, that looks really cool, seeing both of these in street clothes and everything. Now with the chameleon body next to MJ, she is, I don't know, a little bit taller? They look like they're the same exact height, which I, I guess isn't bad, but I still prefer to see MJ just a tiny bit shorter than Peter. And then for your Mary Jane comparison, we have the Spider-Man 1 movie MJ next to our comic version, yeah. And I do not have that horrible looking Spider-Man 3 figure. <laughs> and then here's Mary Jane Watson next to the Kate Bishop Hawkeye figure, and you can see they're definitely using some Kate Bishop Hawkeye parts on this MJ, notably the chest and the arms, and definitely that right hand. But uh, from the mid-torso section all the way down, this is totally different. Except for the feet. Yeah, those feet are actually the same. They, they do look like they have the same feet. Then comparing this all-new Spider-Man figure to some other Spider-Man figures using the same exact mold, of course we have the Pizza Spidey right there, and then we have the SDCC exclusive Todd McFarlane style Spider-Man. And for a couple more Spider-Man comparisons, we have the recently released black-suited Spidey, and then we have the Superior Spider-Man. Then here's our all-new Spider-Man next to the Miles Morales Spider-Man, and I like it when they share the same panel. I don't know, I just like seeing these two Spider-Men side by side teaming up and whatnot, and it's just cool seeing the modern look for Spidey, because when I see them teaming up, this is how they look. And for a mind blow, there's our all new Spider-Man right there next to the chameleon body with the Parker head sculpt on it, and yeah, this is just a little on the short side, and it really just doesn't make sense because, you know, he has the fancy shoes and stuff. He should be a tiny bit taller than the Spidey, but nah, oh well. I'm still very stoked that we can get our Spidey Stark going right over there. And then here's the all new Spider-Man Man, next to the unmasked Marvel Legends big time no letdown Spider-Man. Spider-Man party, yeah! Hey brother, 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 hey brother. Hey brothers. And here's the all new Spider-Man plutonically saving Mary Jane Watson. And man, this is kind of cool I could do this. Look at that balance, right? Yeah, got my balance game on 
point. Pretty happy about that. Took several tries. But yeah, man, I am very pleased with this two-pack set. I am so happy that Hasbro has made this. I have been having a lot of fun taking pictures. I did so many head swaps, more head swapping than I've ever done for any review in the history of this Shardmist Prime channel, which is almost at eight years old. Wow, I've been doing this for almost eight years now. But yeah, man, I really like this two-pack set. I'm definitely going to get two of them. Uh, I'm just very, very pleased at having uh, this right here and just there's just so many options going on so yeah I recommend you try to get two of them and man I don't know what else to say I'm just very very happy with these anyway I hope you guys are equally as happy with this review as I am with these figures if you are please go ahead and hit the like button please leave a comment down below let me know what you think of the figures let me know what you think of the review and also let me know of any head swaps that I may have forgotten you know I'm sure I didn't hit every single one of them so if you have any other head swap ideas please mention them in the comments if you're not subscribed Please hit that subscribe button for more Shardimus Prime videos coming your way. If you're already subscribed and you haven't hit the notification bell, please do so so you know immediately when the next Shardimus Prime video is posted. If you want to see a photo gallery of images, it's all over at MarvelousNews.com. And you can follow me on the social media at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as check out my listings on eBay. I'm selling a bunch of stuff on eBay right now. So check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel through buying some of the pieces from my collection. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Shot, we shot, we shot in your face, I said we shot, we shot, we shot in your face, I said we shot, we shot, we shot in your face, I said we shot, we shot, we shot in your face, I said we shot, we shot, we shot in your face, I said we shot, we shot, we shot in your face,